Welcome back to the channel, everybody. How you doing tonight? I know what you're thinking. You're not going to open that Dark Ascension box, are you? It's worthless. There's literally no cards of any value in this box. And the box costs like 150 bucks. Why would you open this? Um, <laughs> well, today's opening is not just going to be an opening. It's also going to be a, a little lesson on investing. Uh... So this box here, when I uh, I got this like right when I kind of got back into the game and I was just buying every box I could get my hands on, <laughs> kind of, um, you know, I was just trying to buy all kinds of different sets because I wanted to build, rebuild a collection, you know, and get a bunch of stuff I didn't have yet. So I haven't opened a Dark Ascension box or even a Dark Ascension booster pack since I've been back in, I don't believe. So, uh, you know, I want to open it for just because... I want to because I haven't done it yet. Plus, I haven't done it on the channel yet. Um, plus, this is a good lesson here. So, here's the important thing to look at. You see that little thing right underneath that little lion's head? 2012 Wizards of the Coast, LLC. This box is eight years old. Eight years old, and right now you can buy these all day long for 150 bucks. Now, the people that bought these for 80 bucks when they came out, doing pretty good. But I bought this back in like November for eight, uh, for 150 and it's still worth 150 So <laughs> there's boxes that I bought last month for 80 that are over 120 headed towards 150 now. So yeah, this is not a very good investment. Um, it's going to take probably quite a few years unless some kind of drastic combo happens with one of the cards in here but even then i think one card going up in price it'd have to go way up in price because currently the most expensive card in here is uh the uh Micaeus, the unhallowed which is like 35 bucks and his wall version is only 39 bucks so even if we pull if we double tap him one regular or one foil mythic we still don't pay for half of this box so well that's right about half of the box <laughs> so um Holding out of this box is actually more of a waste of space than an investment as far as I can see for the next, you know, because I mean, what, another eight years, it might be worth 200, you know, uh, so, so it doesn't have a very good track record for going up in value. So the storage space and, and, you know, just sitting on it and not doing anything with it, not getting any kind of uh, reimbursement off of it is actually a bad thing. Uh, so... I'll try and talk while I open here when we get into this. I probably won't have to stop for too many awesome pulls or anything <laughs> because there's not really much in here. Uh, just to give you an idea of how worthless this set is right now, the seventh most valuable card on the price list is the Soren Emblem. The tenth is a vampire token. So there's literally just no value in here at all. Um, so here's our Dark Ascension little paper that they don't even spend money on anymore to do any kind of little blurb or anything. Okay, she's kind of hot. Yeah, she probably probably empty your bank account and try and stab you while you're sleeping, but it's pretty hot. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, break in here. I want to open these cards just so I have some of these cards. I've never opened these packs. They are pretty cool looking packs. Um, this whole kind of era of magic is pretty dark. They went back to kind of the ori the origins of magic a little bit in this era, it seems. Um, this was kind of that, I think that this was that Eldritch Moon and, and uh, Avacyn Restored type era. If I were, if I correct, I don't know. I wasn't around during this time. But, uh, you know, they tried to really bubblegum up the game a lot during the Fallen Empire's Homeland Ice Age era to try and bring in more younger players. And it really kind of it made it real cheesy there for a long time. So I'm glad that they kind of darkened it back up and got a little more in touch with their their dark side. <laughs> so, but yeah, the, uh, the main moral of the story here is that you've got to really pick your battles when you're talking about investing. Um, and this was kind of one that I, I got into before I really knew much about the set. I was just, like I said, grabbing everything that looked cool. Um, and just kind of, you know, going through, uh, Cult of the Kindred, going through eBay listings and grabbing up anything that, like I said, I thought might be cool. Oh, we got the flip cards in this one. Okay, cool. So, a Soul Caesar and a Ghostly, Ghastly Haunting? 
ghastly haunting. It's kind of late. My eyes don't work this time of night. So, you know, I've got, like I was saying, I've got boxes that I just bought a month ago that are, uh, that I picked up for like 80, 85 bucks that are, you know, starting to get into the $140, $150 range. So it would make more sense to spend more money on those and less money on, uh, and less space and less time on keeping this stuff sealed. Uh, lost in the woods. Uh, I'm not really paying too much attention to the praise list here. So if I miss something good, let me know. Common flip card. Kind of weird. I think uh, all the flip cards should have been uncommon and rares and mythics, but that's just me. I think the flip cards should be something kind of a little bit special, you would think. They would have uh, kept them more to the rare rare mythic slots, or at least uncommons. Scabs, Wake Dancer, Farbog Bonefinger, Boneflinger, <laughs> Farbog Boneflinger. That's just comedic. Okay. Dungeon Geists. Uh, these are in the welcome decks, aren't they? I think they are. <laughs> and a human token, not the tokens we're looking for. And then we got a Hinterland Hermit for a common flip card. All right, moving on here. So, yeah, when it comes to investing, um, you know, you don't want to buy a stock for 150 bucks a share that's still going to be 150 bucks a share in eight years, you know, or even, you know, two years, three years. You don't want your stocks to stay, stay kind of the same price. You want them to increase in value. Um, unless, of course, they're paying out some just crazy dividend. Then you want them to stay the same or go up but not go down. Um, hey, look, it's a demonic tutor that costs five. Wow. But it's got flashback for eight. I wonder there's not much value in this set. <laughs> oh, we got a land card. That's the first land card. Most of them have been flip cards. Uh, so, yeah, it's... Oh, wow. Is this a repack? Somebody blew this one extra tight. What's going on here? So, yeah, I just want to, I figured I'd just open this and, and put it into my collection and maybe get a couple singles out of here I can I can sell for something, but probably not because uh, Groom Flower, Chill Foreboding, Skurs Dag Flare. Well, yeah, I'm glad I'm not saying every card in this set that I come across is an Indian Commons because some of these names are goofy. Heaven Ghoul Rune Binder. This is a very, like, almost German dialect type kind of stuff going on here. So, very weird. Very weird set. Zombie token. Darn, I was hoping it was that vampire token. Oh, we got an uncommon, and we got our first foil. Hey, a fling. Foil fling. That's uh, some weird art on a fling. This is a definitely a dark set. That dude's teeth are all pointy. That's weird. And his head's missing. Is that his head? Do you fling his own head across the room? That's weird. <laughs> we got our uncommon Lambolt Elder. Oh, that's definitely an elder. She looks like she's about 150. 150. All right. So, as I was saying, you know, you want your you want to pick things that are gonna gonna have a pretty good return in a shorter amount of time. So this one was kind of a kind of a mistake on my behalf as far as that goes. Uh, so, you know, I'm just kind of, at this point, I'm cutting my losses is what I'm doing here. Curse of Misfortunes. Huh, ironic. We're talking about misfortune <laughs> or lack of loss of fortune here. And uh, we get Curse of Misfortunes. Um, yeah, I'm not really, like I said, I'm not really paying too close attention. I looked over the price list and I haven't recognized anything yet from the price list. So, But there's not much on here. There's maybe 15 cards over a dollar fifty total in the set. And, yeah, not much over $1.50. Most of them are 3 to $5. And then there's just a couple, three of them, four of them. That's seven and up range. So, Zombie Apocalypse. Good old Zombie Apocalypse. That one's actually on the price list. That one's a two fitty. Two fitty. <laughs> and a wolf token. And another flip card. Oh, we got a flip card rare. Mondronin Shaman. I don't know what's wrong with her eye. She looks like she's a little freaked out. Kind of cute. I'm going to take her lunch. And a major... Oh, she turns into a werewolf? Oh, man. All the hot ones are always psychos. <laughs> uh, I don't see this one on the bracelets, do I? Uh, 
in? Nope, not really. I could miss it, but yeah. Like I said, not worried too much about the prices on this one because not really much of any value in here, so not gonna get too excited about it. We get this uh Micaiah's the Unhallowed or Soren or Huntmaster of the Fells, Mythics. Those are those are ones we'll pay attention to. But I'm not uh, holding my breath on too many of those. So hey <laughs> Speak of the devil. <laughs> Literally talk about him and he shows up. There you go. There's the most expensive card in the whole set. Why is he uh, the most expensive card in this whole set? Let's find out. So he's a six drop five five with intimidate. Ooh, he's very intimidating with his white robe and his big old staff. Um, whenever a human deals damage to you, destroy it. Ooh, he hates humans, doesn't he? Other non-human creatures you control get plus one plus one and have undying. Oh wow. Yikes. Yeah. Okay. So, no wonder he's worth a lot of money. Uh, that's, uh, he's like $35.30 $35 according to the price list I'm looking at here. We'll see. Like I said, the only way we're even going to get half of our money back on this box is if we get that and a foil version of that. <laughs> we'll be about halfway to getting our money back. Um, also, the foil Soren is worth uh, like 22 so uh, the regular Soren is only worth like 750 I guess there's a, a real big premium on the on the foil version of Soren in this set. So, Warlord, Shatter Perception, another one of those fart bogs. <laughs> Vorapede, is that another mythic? That looks like a mythic. Um, yeah, that's another mythic. Okay, so two mythics in a row, that's kind of weird. Vorapede, is he on there? Survey says no. No, he's not. Oh, there he is. He's 99 cents. 99 cent mythic. And another zombie token. We're looking for vampire tokens. We want the vampire tokens, not the zombie tokens. Oh, and another rare flip one. Uh, the ravenous demon slash arch demon of greed. Oh, flying trample 99. Got to sacrifice a human, though, every, every turn. Otherwise, it deals nine damage to you. Wow, well, that's a backfire. You got to sacrifice a human to transform him, too. Wow. Alrighty, then. And he's a five-drop, four-four just to get out. And you got to sacrifice a creature. Yeah, he's uh, not, not the greatest by the looks of it. Now, I don't see him on the price list. I don't think so. Yep. Probably nobody really stacked him because he's kind of pricey. And there's a hell of a downside. Somebody wipes out all your humans and he's doing nine damage to you. That's not fun. Uh, Garolf's Messenger is our next rare. That one actually is a $7 card. Nice. There we go. We actually are getting a couple of the decent cards in the set, so that's that's good. This is probably, probably would have been considered a decent box, I guess. At least so far, we're only a third of the way through it. But, uh... Start, starting off fairly decent as far as a box would, of this set I would imagine would go. But we'll see here. Now we got Garolf's Mind Crusher. Or Mind, yeah, Mind Crusher. Okay. Uh, the only Garolf is the uh, card on here is the Messenger. So on the price list. And a Spirit Token. And an Uncommon Flip card. Afflicted Deserter. You should never afflict your dessert. Dessert's good. You want to enjoy it. You don't want to afflict it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. Dad jokes. I make myself laugh. That's all that matters. <laughs> all right. Uh, increasing confusion. Yeah, that's kind of me when I'm talking while I'm trying to open packs. Because <laughs> I'm so, so interested in the cards, I'm just like totally forgetting about what I'm talking about half the time. Scorned Village, yeah. There's a lot of ads in this. It's like every other pack is an ad instead of a token. So That's back when they were still like treating tokens as something special, which is probably why the token, there's a couple tokens worth money in this set. And Raven Doomsayer. Gotta hate those Doomsayers. You don't want to be around a bunch of Doomsayers, you know? You want to be around positive people in your life. <laughs> Doomsayer's just gonna bring you down. Another zombie token. There's a lot of zombie tokens. No vampire tokens is what we're looking for. And we're a third of the way through the box only one foil. Wow. I'm surprised the foil, uh, Micaeus isn't uh, worth a lot more than the standard card. It seems like all the others, the foil is almost... Yeah, so all the foils are over double of what the regular card is, except for him. The foil is about the same price. That's very weird to me. I guess just not a lot of people are using him, but he's still worth money? I don't know. Jar of eyeballs? Yeah, that's gross. Who would keep a jar of eyeballs in their room? That's just... 
Kind of gross. Kind of grotesque. All right. And an uncommon Lamholt Elder for our flip. We had her earlier, didn't we? She keeps coming back. That old lady is persistent. Persistent granny. That's what we're going to call her. Persistent granny. All right. So, yeah, when it comes to uh, investing, uh, it's good to know. Oh, look, another messenger. That's nice. Double tap on a, on a good rare. That's that's unusual. And a common flip card. And finally, uh, another foil. It's an uncommon Immerwolf. Okay. That looks like a scared, all, a scared little puppy. All right. Second uncommon in the whole box. <laughs> almost uh, almost halfway through. I got two, or a foil, I mean. Second uncommon. Well, that would be really bad if we only got two uncommons. Of course, that would probably mean we had a god box and we were getting a lot of rares. <laughs> or else we had a defective box and we'd be yelling right now. Um, next up, Increasing Vengeance. Yeah, there's that. Increasing Vengeance. Uh, there's some increasing cards on the price list, but it doesn't look like this one. It looks like the... Uh, Ambitions like a buck thirty and increasing confusion. Oh, this one's a dollar. Increasing confusion is a dollar twenty-five. Hey, the Soren emblem. This is a. This emblem is five bucks. <laughs> so, <laughs> believe it or not, we're putting an emblem in our hitch pile. And if we get a vampire token, we'll put that up there too. Chalice of Life is our flip card, uncommon one. You gain one life. Then, if you have at least ten life more than your starting life total, transform Chalice of Life. Target player loses five life. Wow, oh, that's pretty good. Too bad this isn't in standard right now. Maybe they'll put it in core 2021. That'd be cool, because I'd like to put this in my life gain deck. <laughs> Just to add just a little bit of insult to injury. Yes, I've got 30 life. Now I'm going to make you uh, lose five life a turn. <laughs> or maybe find a way to untap it and do 10 life a turn. All right. The Grim Flowering. Hmm. I could make some comments on that, but I'm trying to keep it PG. Uh, Predator Ooze. Uh, survey says $1.82. Just barely above that $1.50 mark, but still not too exciting. And a common Hairland Hermit again flip card. If you're curious what the boxes I'm talking about are that have gone up, um, I... Picked up a bunch of uh, Rivals of Ixalan and Ixalan boxes that are actually going up. I picked up a lot of the lottery card boxes pretty pretty quick and got pretty good deals on them. So I got a lot of those. Uh, Amon Ket and Our Devastation and Kaladesh and uh, Oath of the Gatewatch. They're all kind of going up pretty, pretty steadily. Curse of Echoes is our next rare. The Curse of Echoes um, doesn't look like it's on there, I don't think. Nope. All right. So... Yeah, flip card uncommon, another afflicted deserter. And, uh, of course, I picked up a case of each of the uh, Guilds of Ravnica and Ravnica Allegiance and those. Um, I think I paid 85 bucks a box for those, and they're going up to, uh, they've been going up quite steadily. They're over around 100 bucks a box right now. Sometimes they'll find them for 90, so they're, st they're not going up fast, but they're going up a little bit. Hell Rider is our next one. I saw him on there, but I'm not seeing him on there right now, so maybe not. And anything in the back? We got a common flip card. Oh, and there, here's our full rare, the Markov Blade Master. Weak. I don't think that's a. Uh, don't think he's worth anything at all. Um, but with the the, you know, with the foil um, multiplier like it is on this set, the foil might be actually be worth something, but. It's on the price list, so I can't tell right now. So we'll just keep going through packs. <laughs> Figure that all out later. If he's worth something crazy, I'll put it in the comments or something. Um, so yeah, uh, and of course, the throne boxes aren't really going up, but I believe they will. The ghoul tree. Uh, I believe the... The, the Throne boxes will, and the, I believe the Theros boxes, the Theros Beyond Death boxes are going to be a hidden kind of a, or a sleeper. I think they're going to be a sleeper. Break of Day is our next foil. Oh, two foils in a row. That's still only the fourth foil in the whole box, but we have a foil rare, but not the foil rare we wanted. We wanted any foil rare that was worth anything would have been nice. Because 
Yeah, we're definitely losing money by opening this box. So, <laughs> would have been nice to get a little bit of value out of it. Alpha Brawl. All right. Oh, wow. Target creature an opponent controls deals damage equal to its power to each other creature that player controls. Then each of those creatures deals damage equal to its power to that creature. Wow. That's an opponent side board wipe right there. That card is awesome. How, how is that? That's not on here? How is that not on the price list? <laughs> yes, I know it's expensive, but come on. We got mana ramp. That thing is brutal. That literally wipes out your opponent's side of the board without taking care of yours. They got one big creature and a bunch of smaller creatures out there. Everybody's dying. It's going to be a bloodbath. Everybody's going to die. Another one of those Chalice of Life's. I do want to put those in my, my white deck, so they need to put that in standard. Hopefully it's in hopefully it's in Core 21. <laughs> There's a lot of other really awesome cards in there that, that help the, the decks in the meta right now. Although, uh, personally, I hope they don't print a single counter spell in the set at all. I know that's probably too much to ask, but I'm really getting sick of counter decks. They're getting really annoying. There's way too many counter spells in uh, standard right now. It's just too easy. Curse of Bloodletting is our next rare. Take a pretty look at that one. Uh, he's a dollar forty-three. Woo! Big money. And another flow. Oh, flow of Hinterland Hermit. We didn't get enough of those yet. Flow flip card. Oh, that's cool. They did. They did fall both sides of the flip cards in this set though. So that's neat. At least they didn't. At least they didn't uh, chintz out on that. Throwing cards around. Just throwing cards around. Knocking everything out of shape here. Pretty bad that one of our biggest hits is a emblem. <laughs> we're, half, we're over halfway through. We're almost two-thirds of the way through the box. And one of our top, what, six hits is a myth, is, a, is an emblem. <laughs> oh, this is so terrible. Huh? Here's our next uh, mythic. It's an Archangel's Light. Uh, I don't remember seeing that one on there. Nope. Nope, no Archangel's Light on there. So it's a mythic, but it's worthless. And another zombie token, because we don't have nearly enough of those yet. Uh, common, and another foil uncommon. Hollow Hinge Spirit. Uh, there's no uncommons or commons in here over a buck at all in this set. Just the two tokens are the only thing. That aren't rares or mythics on the price list. So, yeah, pretty much expected to you know, just not get any much value out of this. I'm, I'm surprised I did get the one Michaelis, though. That's nice. Or Michaelis, or whatever it is. I don't know. Seance! Doing the seance. Look at that face of bubble. He looked kind of angry. They're all like, uh, maybe we shouldn't play with the Ouija board anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's our next rare there. Not worth anything. Um, and the Chosen of Markov. Hmm. Last stack. Last stack of 12 packs here. We're two thirds of the way through the box officially, and we've got what? Well, what do we got? Like fifty bucks worth of cards, <laughs> sixty maybe on the high end, with the with the token, <laughs> with the emblem. We only have sixty dollars worth of cards out of a hundred fifty dollar box, and duplication on the Hell Rider that we already established isn't worth anything. All right, so I wouldn't mind du duplication on the Macias there. Uh, that'd be nice. The unhallowed. Micaeus, Micaeus, rock me, Micaeus. Sorry. Uh, moving on. Feed the pack. You got to feed the pack, otherwise they'll starve. And then you won't have a pack. I'll just have a couple dying dead dogs. All right. Plan on doing a video about investing in magic and pros and cons and all that stuff. Uh, let me know if you want to see something like that. Um... Trying not to open oh, another Curse of Bloodletting. Wow, we're getting duplication on all the crappy rears. And then we got an uncommon flip and a common foil. Wild Hunger. All right. So, yeah, I'm uh, looking for all the types of videos to do that you guys are into. It's it's funny. Some of the videos that I get the most views on are like the, the ones that I think are just like filler videos and nobody's going to care, you know? <laughs> Another sands. Holy moly, we're getting duplicates of every single rare we pulled. How big was the set? <laughs> How many cards were in this set? Is there like 50 cards in this set? What's going on here? Give me another Micaeus if you're going to give me duplication. Jeez. 
There's a Soren. Give me some Soren or duplication there. I'm fine with that. Oh boy. All right. Hey, there we go. <laughs> I just got to talk about the card and then I pull him. There we go. Soren. He's worth a uh, 750. There we go. Nice hit. And our fourth mythic. So we did get the top two mythics on the set. That's pretty good. Oh, and another mythic, a flit. Oh, this is the Huntmaster of the Fells, the third most valuable card in the set at a whole $7. Two mythics and one pack, two valuable mythics. That was like a $15 pack right there. Nice. That is awesome. I was beginning to wonder if we were going to get either of those cards, and then boom, both of them in one pack. That's something you don't see every day. Two mythics, one pack. Two girls, one... No, never mind. Um, so, <laughs> there we go. Moving on, moving on. Sudden disappearance. Like that conversation. Um, nope, I don't see that one on the price list. Of course, it's kind of hard to read it, but, you know. And a vampire token. Hey! <laughs> wow, we got a whole bunch of luck right there in a short amount of time. That was pretty cool. Two packs in a row. We ended up with uh, three of the top ten cards on the price list. Nice. Yeah, the vampire token's like 275 so worth more than... 90% of the rares in this, and mythics in this set. Ah, uh, pretty weird. Pretty weird how time, time works on uh, these older magic sets, you know? You get, like, common card worth 50 bucks on one set, and then uh, a lot of duplication in the next set, <laughs> but not duplication that we want. Is that, like, our 10th Hinterland Hermit? I think it might be. All right, now to five packs to go. We got a couple good packs in a row there. Don't, don't. Stop now. Let's get a let's get a foil mythic. Either Soren or uh, the the Micaeus. That'd be awesome. We're gonna get a duplication. That's the one we want. Not the increasing devotion duplication. I don't think that one was on there. No. Uh, nope. That's one of the increasings that doesn't show up on the price list at all. Coming. Oh, and another foil rare. Wow. It's not worth anything, but two foil rares in an old box like this. That's pretty unusual. I don't think, I didn't think they had dual foil rares back then. Um, yeah, that's very unusual. The Doomsayer. Yeah, that's very weird. Two foil rares in one box. I mean, we were getting very few foils, period. I mean, we only got, what, four, that was our eighth foil total in the whole box. And two of them are rares. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. I opened that War of the Spark box the other day, and I only got one foil rare in the whole box, and it was not a good one, and, uh, we only got like seven foils in the whole box, I think. It's pretty terrible. And a Requiem Angel. Uh, I didn't see that one, I don't think. Nope. Not on the list. Oh, another foil flip card. Wolf Bitten Captive. Yeah. Oh. So he's going to be uh, uh, one of those, uh, yeah. He's going to be one of those werewolves soon if he's wolf bitten. Yeah, that's not good. We don't want to be wolf bitten. Crawling Horde Killer. That's what he becomes, I guess. Yeah. Pretty cool. Not worth anything, but pretty cool. <laughs> All right, three packs to go, and then we're done wasting money for the night. <laughs> we'll waste some more tomorrow, probably. Um, <laughs> deranged outcast. Most outcasts tend to be deranged. That's why they're outcast. Just saying. You know what I mean? Uh, spirit token and... Chosen of Markov again. All right. Oh, I just noticed the uh, the lands are Innistrad lands. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess it was from the Innistrad block. Now, what was it? Innistrad, Dark Ascension, and Avacyn Restored was that block, I guess. I do miss the three set blocks. I wish they'd bring those back. So much easier to keep track of everything. Oh, another Jar of Eyeballs. Ew. First card. And, of course, another Lambhold Elder. And a Foil Common. All right, last pack. Are we going to get the foil uh, Micaeus in here? we got two foil rares. It could happen. Well, the foil Soren. Either one of those would be nice. Uh, what else are we missing? We're missing a Thalia, Guardian of Thraben. We didn't get any Thalias in here. She's like six fifty. And a Grave Crawler's in here. He's like six bucks. So either one of those would be nice for a close. Something good. Come on, give us something spicy. Tracker's Instincts. Diagraph Captain. Another fart bog, and it's white. Could it be Thalia? 
It is. <laughs> nice. Sally Guardian, Guardian of Thraven. I just got to talk about the card I want in every pack in this set, and then I get it. It's crazy. So, nice hit at the end. And just then coming. All right. So, what did we end up getting? We ended up getting... Oh, boy. We ended up damaging. Uh, we ended up getting... <laughs> The Huntmaster of the Fells, the Soren, and the Micaeus, which are the top three cards in the set, at uh, 35, 750, and 7. So, is that 15 um, plus 35? It's like 35, 30, so it pretty much rounds up to 15 plus 35 is 50. Yeah, 50 bucks there. And then we get those two are not worth anything. Oh, the War Beads, a dollar. Woo! Then we got a uh, Thalia is the okay the Gross Messengers. That's the fourth most expensive at six fifty eight. So there's another like thirteen there, and then Thalia is uh, six fifty as well. So nineteen fifty, and then we got the Soren Emblem, which is five bucks. The Vampire Tokens, what five bucks, four bucks, uh, three bucks. And then the zombie apocalypse is um, two fifty. Two fifty. So, eh, not too bad. I mean, better than I thought we were gonna do, honestly, because I kind of figured we wouldn't get any of the Micaeus, and we just end up with a, a bulk of a lower lower uh, end type cards. So, I did better than I thought we were gonna actually. So, not bad. And two foil rares in an older box. That's very weird. Um, not something you, I usually see in a little bit older box like this. Uh, the Doomsayer and the Blade Master, both of them, full rare. So we got two full rares and then what, two uncommons and one, two, three, four, five commons. So I mean, we actually got as many rares as we did uncommons in the fall slot, so that's kind of unusual. So not bad. Let me know what you guys think. Um, you know, obviously we didn't get $150 back unless I missed some tokens or emblems or something, which I don't think I did. All zombies in here. I don't think there was any vampires except the one I pulled. Uh, nope, didn't miss any tokens. So, yeah, not too bad. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments there. What you thought of this set. If you like this set or this block. Uh, I've got a box of Abyssin Restored. I'm not going to open that because that would be really dumb. Because that actually is going up in value. Um, I also got it for a really stupid good price. Uh, <laughs> I kind of... So, I, I played a, I, I, you guys probably saw the video a while back. If you didn't, go check out that video. It's pretty awesome. I played a uh, throwback draft of Innistrad. It's pretty expensive. It was a $50 buy-in for three packs of Innistrad, but that's pretty much what three packs of Innistrad cost. But, uh, yeah, go watch that video. I did pull something really tasty in my third pack that totally paid for my, uh, my draft entry fee. <laughs> and then, uh... I did really good, but a, a buddy of mine who I hadn't seen since I used to play before 12 years ago, who was one of the guys I played with at Friday Night Magic every weekend, um, he actually was in the event too, so it was cool to actually catch up with a, a one of my old Magic buddies that I hadn't seen in over a decade. And uh, we ended up playing in like the one of the final semifinals or something like that round, and uh, there's a lot of players, so, so it's, that wasn't, that was still pretty far off from winning but uh one of the rounds i ended up playing him and i literally lost to him we were one one and i lost this the second game uh it was best two or three um by one life one life and it was because i misplayed otherwise i would have beat him but he ended up winning the the tournament and uh the prize for winning the tournament was a box of abyssin restored and he ended up selling me the box pretty pretty cheap <laughs> I, uh, I offered him a, some some cash money on the spot for it, and uh, he really didn't have an interest in the in the cards. Uh, he he was more concerned with cash, so I hooked him up with some cash, and he hooked me up, up with the box. I got a pretty decent deal on it, and uh, that was that was way back I think in December, um, and uh, so it's gone up quite a bit since then. So that one I'll probably hold on to for quite a while, unless one of my uh, patrons wants to sponsor a video on it or something. But anyways, enough babbling. This is like a 35-minute video now. But I'm sure you guys are used to my long-winded videos. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments and what you think of this set. And uh, like I said, watch out on what you're buying. If it's an 8-year-old box and it really hasn't gone up a whole lot, 
and it hasn't really moved in the past year, probably not a good investment to jump onto. Try to get stuff cheap that you know is going to go up. Uh, buying newer products is really the best way to go because then, you know, but don't buy just one new product, buy several new products. That way, if you cover if you cover across the board, the odds of one of those going up is pretty good. So, like, say you bought uh, a good amount of each set that came out this year. So you bought you bought a, a, a case of uh, Theros, a case of Ikoria, a case of Core 21, uh, a case of Jumpstart, and a case of... Uh, the the oh what is it Zendikar coming out and then a case of double masters the odds of none of those going up considerably over the next few years is pretty slim odds are out of those seven sets at least a couple of them are probably going to be worth a lot more in a few years than they are now so even if the others don't budge really you're still done good but if you invest in just one of those sets and it doesn't go up and the others do, or one of the others does, you're going to be kicking yourself. So it's all about uh, diversifying your portfolio. All right. We'll get into more of that later on. I know you guys probably got better things to do. So thanks for, so much for watching. Check out a couple other videos while you're here. And uh, hopefully we'll see you in the next one. You guys take care. Bye.